Thus far in this textbook, we've discussing individual atoms, and now we are ready to combine individual atoms together to create molecules, and this is going to come about through bonding. The first real ideas about bonding came from Gilbert Lewis, and this was in the early 1900s, and his proposal was that atoms bonded to each other to gain stability, and they did that by gaining the electron configuration similar to noble gases. The basic ideas of Lewis theories are, really it's the valence electrons that play the important role in bonding. So when we were talking about electron configurations, remember we had core electrons and then we had valence electrons. The core electrons were part of the noble gas core and the valence electrons were past the noble gas core. It's really those valence electrons that are going to be involved in bonding. Sometimes to gain this noble gas configuration, electrons are transferred and that causes us to form an ionic bond. And sometimes electrons are shared. And in this sharing, the atoms are going to gain a configuration similar to a noble gas. In most cases, in order to gain this stable electron configuration, and this is especially true for covalent bonds, they need to have an electron configuration where they have eight electrons around them, and this is called an octet. So we're going to find that this idea of having eight electrons around an atom is very important, and when you get to organic chemistry, it's actually called the octet rule. What you're going to find is, in most cases, atoms want to have eight electrons around themselves, and this is to mimic the noble gas configuration. So with a noble gas configuration, you have a full S subshell and a full P subshell. S subshells hold two electrons, P subshells hold six. So two plus six is eight. So we're gonna see a lot of eight. So when we start combining these atoms together, we're gonna to form what's called Lewis structures. And it's a representation of the molecule that we are making. To make a Lewis structure, you start with what's called a Lewis symbol for each individual atom making up the molecule. The Lewis symbol is the chemical symbol of whatever element we're dealing with, and that symbol represents the nucleus and the core electrons. So these are things that are not involved in the bonding. And then we represent the number of valence electrons around that element by using electron dots. So really we're focused on the number of valence electrons. So we need to represent them very clearly in our Lewis symbol. Remember, we have discussed how to determine the number of valence electrons, and you can do that very easily by looking at the periodic table. Really, it is involved in what period your element is involved in. So we start from the left. So period one is one valence electron. Period two is two valence electrons. Then we jump over the transition metals and continue. So boron's got three, carbon's got four, and anything inside of this whole column has the same number of valence electrons. So phosphorus has five, sulfur has six, and continuing on. As we've discussed, eight is what we're looking for. Two very important exceptions to this rule are hydrogen and helium. And the problem here is, is they do not have any P electrons. So we're not looking for eight. For hydrogen and helium, we're looking for two. We're looking to fill our S subshell. So that full S subshell gives a electron configuration like helium. So hydrogen is gonna be the major exception to the rule of eight in that hydrogen wants to have two electrons. And we'll see this more when we start putting these things together. So hydrogen has one valence electron, and remember for electron configurations, helium is actually over here, so helium has two. And so helium is said to have a duet, and hydrogen is going to want to mimic that, and in our bonded structures, hydrogen is gonna to wanna to have two electrons, and that's going to look like one bond. So just remember, hydrogen and helium is an important exception to the octet rule. So it's with elements that n is greater than one that we need to start thinking about an octet. We also need to clearly represent the number of valence electrons. So the first thing you do is determine the element you're looking at, determine how many valence electrons it has, and then you put the valence electrons around the central core element, and you need to do this in a specific configuration. Here, each dot represents a valence electron, 
And what you need to do is put one valence electron on each side until you reach four. So here, lithium has an electron on one side, the beryllium has it on two, boron has it on three, carbon has it on four. So you place what we're going to end up calling unpaired electrons, one on each side until you get to four. Then with the fifth one, you start pairing them. So here with nitrogen, we have five valence electrons. You put one electron on each side, then the fifth one you pair it. So nitrogen actually has three unpaired electrons and one set or pair of electrons. And as we continue on, oxygen has six, so now we only have two unpaired electrons. Fluorine has seven, so it only has one unpaired electron. And neon has eight, so there are no unpaired electrons. And we're going to find out pretty quick it's those unpaired electrons that undergo bonding. And this kind of makes sense that neon has no unpaired electrons, so it doesn't want to bond. So noble gases are inert, and we're going to see that. So remember, you count the number of valence electrons. You need to put the valence electrons around in a very specific configuration, so unpaired until you get to four. Then you start pairing them, and this is vital. So we want to be able to draw the Lewis symbol for each one of our atoms. Then what we do is we start combining these Lewis symbols together um, by representing sharing of electrons between the actual atoms. So at this point, we don't know if electrons are going to be completely transferred to form an ionic bond or being shared to form a covalent bond. And this is important once we actually get to the formal Lewis structure. So after we have, we're done fulfilling the bonding, this is going to be able to give us some ideas about the chemical properties of the molecule we're interested in. Later on in this chapter, we're going to discuss that the Lewis structure can allow us to predict the three-dimensional geometry of a molecule. And then from the three-dimensional geometry of the molecule, we can estimate other properties like polarity and bond strength inside of the actual molecule. So Lewis structures, and this is important, Lewis structures really only tell us the bonding that's going on. So it's another theory that tells us the geometry of a molecule. A Lewis structure just says, where are the electrons at inside of my molecule? So in this part, in general chemistry, we typically do not involve transition metals. You can draw Lewis structures of transition metals. It's just the process is kind of beyond this textbook at this time. So we are not going to be drawing Lewis structures of molecules that involve transition metals.